Hey guys, welcome back to another video on this weird and wonderful AR channel. In this video, we'll be having a look at Doe, which is a new um, AI based video animation interface, which you can run locally or on a hosted GPU that basically lets you create multiple frames so you can generate the images or you can upload existing images there and then essentially take those images and create movement and animation with that you can also combine various different motion LoRa's to animate the image and the movement so here are a few examples I'll share a few examples of what I've created so far as well now let me show you how I run this up so the link is in the description it's on the github page so that's where we go to um, it's on the github page so that's where we go to get the uh, repository that's the one here and uh, I'm going to run this I've got it running locally on my computer as well however running it on a hosted GPU like provided by runpod for example you can essentially have higher VRAM and uh, run the installer it doesn't take very long so i'm going to walk you through the setup process and uh, you can start creating those pretty cool animations just like the ones i showed you uh, on your own so the setup instructions and everything is documented i know a few people have had trouble but um, in my case on my windows pc what i did was essentially i downloaded only this windows setup.bat and basically ran it on my computer and this does basically everything so if you look at the batch file it checks and for a folder if it doesn't exist it'll create one and then it will clone the git repository clone comfy ui and uh, create a python environment activate it and then install all these other necessary components so that's pretty easy to get started so all i did was basically downloaded this setup file and just ran that batch file on my windows computer once you do that, then to launch the application, you've got um, this particular script. So you activate the environment and then run entry point dot bat um, or on a Linux environment, you would run this command line to launch it. Now you do need on Microsoft this uh, MSC++ redistributable, but if you're playing in this space, you would already have that with other repos that you would have run locally. Uh, so let's get started. Um, I am here on my run pod environment so I've logged in and this is the one that's recommended for this particular version so let's click on deploy and here I can choose a different GPU of my choice so got the faster GPUs and well not so faster GPUs but I'm gonna go with something that has decent amount of uh, VRAM, right? Something like the 6000 or the 5000, or we could run the 3090. So, just for fun's sake, let's run the 3090 in this case. So, I'm going to deploy this. Um, the only thing I want to do is basically map that internal port. Um, this application runs on port 5500. Um, they advise you to basically expose that port. Um, so, we will do that. 5500 and I think I'm going to increase the disk space to about uh, 40 GB as well so I have more space on the persistent disk uh, set overrides and then continue and deploy so now we're going to wait for a little bit till this pod is initialized and it gets going and I'll speed this up and I'll come back with the next steps once we have the pod running Okay, now that everything's started up here, we can get started with the next step, which I'm going to do is connect, and I'm going to connect to the Jupyter Lab. So that's launching. And then as per the instructions here, what it's asking us to do is run the Linux commands. So if we scroll down, this is the Linux command. So I'm just gonna copy that. And then to run it, we'll run this at the end. So simple as that, launch terminal, and we're gonna paste the command here. It's gonna run in the workspace directory, which is the persistent drive. So if you want to save that later and come back to it, you can, um, and then just run up another GPU. So now this will take a little bit of while as well, while it does its thing, just for aesthetic sake, I'm gonna to switch to the dark view, cause that's what I like. 
and cool hey, here you go it's done the repo clone it's doing cloning comfy ui comfy ui runner so it's getting started so it will this will take some time and i'll come back to you once it's all done okay that took about 10 minutes to do all the installation and it looks like it's all done now we have the command prompt so let's go and grab the execution command so that's this one here and run that now that's normal because i think the installation instructions are missing something one thing they are missing is that you need to change to the do directory so cd do and now if we run it that should run just fine give it a second it will start and you should see the details come up and then we need to basically get the port so we can see the uh, UI there we go that's the external link that is running but the port is not this one so what I'm gonna do is grab this link and open a new window paste here and just leave that there for the moment come back to my pod and go to my tcp port mapping and here this internal port which is where the app is running is mapped to this external port so because we're accessing it through public um, url we need to update that so let's just put that up here click enter and now the do interface should launch you'll see a message up here that it's running it's doing stuff obviously the first time it's going to take a little bit to initialize everything this is the ux for do and here it's just giving you a few tips and i'll share with you what i have learned so far and how i have used with my images and animations i've created so actually read that yes click continue the app obviously read that the first thing it'll do, it will create a new project for you. This is down here, my first project. The app itself, the project itself is in 512 by 512 resolution. So if you go to project settings, you can adjust the resolution here. Uh, you can also upload an audio file to add to your project if you like. But let's go back to the creative process. So the way it's built is you have a timeline where you can create a series of shots shot one you can create shot two by adding another shot and so on and so forth you can generate frames here you can use prompts negative prompts text to image image to image you can also use control net etc and create images that you like and then basically add them to your shot the ones you want um, now, if you use Midjourney or Stable Diffusion or Comfy UI in the past, you may already have images that you may want to use. And in my case, that is the case. So I use those and basically find the most appropriate ones to animate with. Okay, so let's keep moving. So this is our project. This is the timeline. We'll have shot one, shot two, shot three, and so on. You can keep adding those. The adjust shot. Okay, so that's the toolbox here. And this button here lets you animate it so when you go to adjust shot you are adjusting the various different parameters and positions of this image right so if you want to rearrange the image if you want that one um, because it looks in sequence here right he's looking this way that way or let's move that one back that way so he's looking there looks there and then kind of turns back this way um, again here we can generate more frames and that's about it okay you can add more frames here if you like now the fun bit happens in the animate shot so when you click on animate shot you've got uh, various different parameters these are default to this setting and they will default to each time you go in this setting when you animate shot so I want to increase the duration so I like to have about two seconds duration here so let's increase that to two seconds so two seconds between the transition speed of transition I leave that default freedom between frames I generally play with 0.3 and 0.4 so that's okay now you want to choose which model you're going to use here so let's download a model and from their list of models so they provide the links 
already. So let's use uh, Epic Realism, for example. Click download. It's going to start downloading model. Give this a few seconds, it'll download. Now, of course, I'm running on this cloud GPU, so it's getting that through super fast internet, much faster than the one I have at home. And uh, that's another advantage, downloading models onto those um, um, cloud-based uh, GPU services. It's much faster. Cool. We can see the, if you go to choose model, now we have the option to choose that. There are no motion LoRa's, so I suggest maybe don't download for the first run. Um, otherwise, you have a bunch of LoRa's that they have provided. Um, I think this one's pretty good. Rotation, temporal, unit, uh, zooming in is quite fun. Zoom out is also good. So you can try and download different LoRa's. So for the first run, leave everything as is. Just have a model there. Leave this to standard in terms of the overall motion and click Q. Now what that will do is it will queue up a job here. You'll see it'll come up in a second. There you go, right? That is queued up, it's in progress. Now, because this is the first time we're running Doe, it is going to take a little bit of time because it's gotta do a few things. It's gotta download a bunch of comfy UI custom nodes and their corresponding models and so forth, which you'll see it do now. All right, here we go. It's rendering, starting the render on the frames. It's done its bits. Took about, yeah, 10 minutes or so. Now it's running the animation. And if we go back to Doe, still in progress. And once it's finished, then it will have the video clip here. So let's have a look. Watch this finish. set there it's just saving that in the project no audio to sync that's fine now if we go back here you can hit refresh log here and you click refresh it should render and show you the animation here so there we go that's the rendered animation using the three clips and with uh, a five second duration so let's play that and see there we go so looks pretty interesting and the eyes are a bit weird but you can see there's movement there between the two frames so that's one this is the first variant so that's why it's called the main variant so you can re-render it multiple times you can change parameters and queue it up um, or also you can just say generate multiple variants here by adding the numbers up and add to queue it means it'll produce three videos each time now what's also interesting is when you have those frames up the top and you change the different durations you'll see that this graph kind of shows you how the first frame blends out where the other one starts blending in and then it eventually blends out the other one as well so as you uh, play with these parameters these values will change and the graph reflects visually what it's going to do so it's kind of a cool way to see what's happening there all right and you can keep producing multiple frames so let's go back up to the timeline and i'm going to add a shot here it's going to be shot number two and we're going to go to adjust shot and i'm going to browse files so let me go grab some files uh let's try using these i think there's head movements here and so forth so let's use that one that one let's use that one that one that one that one and then from there zoom out a bit no maybe not that one okay let's try with those frames for now so those are the frames that it's loading up there's four so you can see there's two pages there we go, it's almost done. You can see there's a file limit, how big each file can be. With 500 megabytes, it's pretty good. There we go, that's done. Add keyframes. So now our shot two is ready. 
and those are the frames so let's think about the movements here uh okay i think that could work let's see the render so let's go animate shot and we're gonna add maybe three seconds this time so make it slow and therefore longer three seconds and freedom between frames i'm gonna change it to 0.3 0.3 for some reason there we go last one same model but this time I'm going to use a LoRa so download LoRa and we're going to use this one here download now the LoRa files are small so it doesn't take long to download those There we go. So that LoRa is in action. You can also upload your own LoRa's um, and your own models there as well. How much coherence? That's fine. Uh, this one here, sometimes I drill it down to about 0.95 amount of motion. So makes it nice and smooth. Add to Q. And here we go. The Q is there. And if you check our command line, it should be starting it's got the frames there we go all right looks like it's done there we go Now, if you're interested in um, trying out RunPod, um, have a look at the link down below. It's a referral link, it's an affiliate referral link, so it will let them know that I have directed you to their website. And if you end up spending a little bit of money, then they may be inclined to give me a slice of that. It doesn't cost you anything more, it just uh, lets them know that you came through my content to their website, and it's a nice way to support my channel and website. That's all guys, I just wanted to quickly show you how you can install Doe and run it up in the RunPod cloud GPU environment and essentially uh, animate your first few clips. Have fun generating your own animations and if you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I will check them and respond to them as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching this video guys, I'll see you in the next one, bye bye.